Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandeep, and I am the co-founder of Code Tigers. Wish you all a very, very happy Diwali. Uh, this week, with on the uh, occasion of Diwali 2020, uh, we are starting. We are, we are going to have our first live stream. We have for the first time we are going to have a wonderful guest from the gaming industry, and along with. Uh, him, we are going to be having a young coder from grade six who will be making a game. And together, we'll try and understand a little bit more about game design, a little bit more about the, uh, why games are so popular. So in order to move further, uh, let me just quickly in, bring on the stage a young coder for today. Uh, good morning, Pratham. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm fine. How are you doing this morning? Mm, great. OK, awesome. So we know that you you have an activity planned for us, and uh, you will be showing us how to make a game today, correct? Yes. Yes. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm. Hi, guys. I'm Pratham. I'm 11 years old. I was born in I was born in Bangalore, 2009, January 24th. And I love to play games and building Legos and and pl playing some games like Hungry Sharks and Among Us. Any game that I like. OK, cool. So Pratham, uh, you, you like playing games online, more, more of online, or do you like any other games as well? Online and any game also. Online okay, cool. or any game. Cool. So uh, let's also bring our guest uh, on the screen today. The guest for today is Oliver Jones. Hi, Oliver. Hello. How are you? Hi, Hi Sandeep. Hi, Pratham. How are you doing? Good morning. And happy Diwali to you. Happy, happy Diwali, Diwali to you also. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, so we're just talking to Pratham about what kind of games he likes. And uh, you know, he was telling us uh, about some of the games, Among Us and some of the other names. Among Us is one of my favorites, uh, favorites yes. too. Yeah, um, cool. it, 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 our team at Bombay Play can't can't play enough. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's amazing. So, uh, Oli, please tell us a little bit about what you do, and uh, you know, what is Bombay Play all about? Sure, uh, the Bombay Play. It's a game a, a game developer uh, based here in India. Um, we're about twenty five people, and we specialize in making the kinds of games that uh, you would love to play with your friends. Um, so, you know, online multiplayer games, a bit like Among Us. <laughs> uh, but uh, we specialize in like board games, card games. Um, so, uh, uh, for example, uh, we just released a, like a, a, bat a card battle game, which is like Uno, except you kill everyone. It's really fun. You should give it a go. It's called Lockdown Brawl. Um, and yeah, we've been doing this now for uh, uh, well, I've been working in game design for over 10 years. Um, this is my second uh, second shot at, game, uh, at a game dev company, the first one being a company again in India called Moonfall. And before then, uh, you know, I worked as a designer, uh, a, a game designer. It's like every, every person's dream job, work, like making games for a living. Uh, at least uh, I, I would hope so, <laughs> uh, trying to make people happy. Uh, is the objective, um, and I, I worked at, um, uh, at Zynga, uh, another big gaming uh, company, and Blue Mobile. Uh, yeah, and so that's my background. Yeah, I, I think I have played some of the games uh, that were created by Zynga. So I still remember one of those was a game called Farmville, and then uh, there was another in which you owned a cafe and you could build your cafe and you could have more and more customers. Yeah, Chefville and Farmville were, were very yeah. popular games of the day. 
and yeah. uh, but I, I believe both yeah both of those were run out of uh, the Zynga studio in India. Mm. Okay, quite fascinating, and I'm sure we're looking forward to knowing more about game design, uh, the industry, and and have a very interactive session with you and Pratham and maybe uh, and of course have uh, well, both of you create this game that we're looking forward to create today. I'm really excited. Yay. <laughs> Pratham, so are we all set to start with the activity? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Now okay. share. No. So if you could share your screen. So the game that we are going to be making today is uh, called Boat Race, correct, Prasad? Yes, sir. Okay. This is my starter project. Uh, yeah, so this game that we are all going to create is base, is being created in Scratch. And Scratch is a programming language created by MIT. So it, it's a very powerful platform using which kids can make games, animation, and projects. And they use Scratch almost all over the world. It's something which is really, really popular. Now, what we are seeing here today in front of you, all of you is a starter project a which has some basic uh, building blocks to start with. So the link to the starter project is there on your screen right there. So everyone can uh, just use the same link to get to this page. You can just type it, type this link in your URL in the address uh, bar, and you'll all be able to come to this screen. Yes, Pratham. Now, this is my starter project. You see all the blocks here. Now, there's there's a board and an obstacle course. The board have to reach to the the beach by with the without touching it so first thing we have to do so the first, first obje the, the objective of the game is to uh, be able to take this boat all across the the course and take, yes. it to, take it to this uh, part here which is the objective the yellow color right yeah okay the beach okay now there's Now first we have have to get the boat boat moving. Then how we first thing, how how are we going to control the boat with yeah. the keyboard or with the mouse? With with the mouse. Oh. First bring this. Then. Okay, so first thing we have to do now. So that green flag starts the application. Yeah. Yeah. And now we need to create a loop. Yes, we have to go over here to do it. Hmm. Now, first thing we have to get. Hmm. We need to make the boat move, right? Yeah. So in order to do that, what we will do, we will simply uh, set the first, the first thing that you want to do is you want this board to start moving where the mouse pointer goes, correct? Yes. So you'll, you'll go to the mo motion okay. blocks. And there's a block called point towards mouse pointer. Yes. And and then you want to set, set up the number of steps that the boat moves when the mouse moves. So how many steps do you want the boat to move when the mouse moves along? Uh, one. Maybe, a, maybe one step to start with. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And now, now you want to keep doing this. You want to keep yes. doing this as whenever the mouse moves, it keeps it should keep happening. So you can put this inside a loop and yeah. To go to controls, you see the uh, 
third block, it is written forever. Bring it here and put the point towards the mouse. Move one step on inside the forever block. Now let's test the code. See? Awesome. Now the board is moving. When yeah. I stop the cursor, it starts going fast and glitch a lot. Now to yeah. solve this, start shaking a little sh bit. Yes. I've never no. seen a boat do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, go, if there, bring the the fourth block. If then, go to sensing. Uh, yes, this tends to mouse pointer, put it under here, For then pick, I mean, blank, uh, but, my, uh, greater than, yeah, that's greater called the greater than, than block, yeah, yes, now, uh, so, So you'll change the number. Yeah, I have to change number to five, and the distance to mouse pointer. This. So. And the, the idea behind doing this is, uh, what is the idea behind doing this? The idea behind doing this is the when the boat moves close to the mouse pointer. Uh, within this distance of five pixels, it should yeah. only move it should stop. within that range. Yeah, it should only move as long as the mouse pointer is within that distance or beyond yes. that distance. Yes. So, so now Pratham, <sighs> you'll have to you'll have to uh, add the two blocks that you've added on the top inside this if statement. Okay. Yeah, because that's the condition that you've given, right? Yes. So the board should only move when it's more than five pixels from the mouse pointer. Yeah. So you have those two blocks in the forever loop. Yeah. Yeah. Just take them out, put them in the if inside the if block. Yeah. Separate the two, separate the if block. Perfect. Now put it all inside the forever loop. Now can you no. test your code? Let's test the code. Now just stop the mouse pointer somewhere and let's see if the board still shakes. Yeah, perfect. It does it. Awesome. Yes. Now the <laughs> now now the se third step is to clash into a log. Yeah, now, but before that, before that, there's one thing which we missed out on. Yeah. Did you notice that whenever we stop the game, the board does not reach the starting point. It still stays there. Yeah, yeah that's the starting point. And that's the starting. You, you also wanted to look at that direction, right? Yeah. So we'll bring out the go to X and Y block, which has the X and Y values for this position. And we'll use this set direction block oh, point oh, in direction block and you we'll have put to it put it into zero yeah now when i go i use this now if i stop it and go it responds no yeah now the uh <laughs> Third step is to. So, uh, pass Pratham, before we go, before we move further, I wanted to pr yes. probably ask Oli. Oli, uh, the kind of game that we're building right now is there? A sp is this a specific category of games? Uh, what, what's this game? What's this kind of game called? I mean, I, I would call it perhaps uh, a maze game or a puzzle game. Um, there are so many different kinds of games out there. Yeah, uh, all with their own sort of. Unique little categories. I'd, I'd say this is 
uh, I, I wouldn't say necessarily say it's a race game unless you have a timer <laughs> okay. and you're trying to beat the time or trying to beat someone. But uh, right now, uh, we're, we're at a, maybe we'll get there by the end of this session. But uh, for, for now, it's a sort of object avoidance. It's a it's a maze game. Yeah. Although the maze is linear, so <laughs> not too much of a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> so, so are so these maybe... kind of games really popular? Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, very, uh, if you would imagine, like, uh, it gave, this, this is sort of similar to the foundations of Pac-Man, you know. Uh, we have a character who navigates around a maze, um, but in the case of Pac-Man, he has also people chasing him. So it makes the, the game design a bit more exciting. Hmm. But we'll get there. We'll get there. This is only this is only five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pratham. So we've done, uh, I think, a couple of things. We've set the motion of the boat. And we have uh, fixed the uh, movement because of the block where it was, it was moving. Lagging a bit. Yeah. Yes. Now, what is the next step? The next step? You want you want this boat to class over here. Now we have to go to costumes. Can you first try and move? Uh, can you first try and show why do we want to? Uh, what do what are we trying to achieve? Can you try and move the boat and take it through one of the obstacles and let's see what happens. When I go to obstacles, it goes over it. Yeah, it's magic. We want to crash it, but it goes over it now. This new challenge. We, yes. Yeah. Now it's a challenge. Mm. Yes. There's an there's a in co go to costume over here. You see this normal normal. There's a boat. It is not crashed. Now to do it, uh, right click on it. You see duplicate, duplicate it, and you see normal and normal too. So you created costume, another costume. Yes. Okay. To, now name the costume class. Class. Now the costume is known as class. Now we want to separate it be, because it's class. Now to separate it, you see this block over here. It is written select. Now go there, do it like this, do do in square or rectangle, bring it out and see it's crashed in into pieces. Yeah. Very good. Effect. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down into little pieces. Yeah. Now it's class. Now is that is that enough? Only or should we add more? I mean, it might need some smoke. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't get artistic, but uh, for the purpose, it seems fine. It seems fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now go to code, bring out, then put it, wait, don't put it under forever. Now we have to go to sensing, touch color, click on the color, you see the dropper. Click on it and you see the big circle. Click on the oak, oak wood log. Now you see the color change into log. Now, now go to looks. Now switch cost. The in fifth block. It is written switch costume to crash. To crash. Yeah. Now, when you respawn, you want this thing. No, but before that, do you want to even give out a message like you crashed or, you know, 
Ooh, like, ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something really nice and... It has to be convincing. Convincing. You crashed. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Oli, is, 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 is adding exciting messages a very important part of making the games exi- uh, interesting? Yeah, get games. Uh, good games are immersive, and uh, yeah, you, you you have to get people into the story, into what's happening. Um, you, you have to feel like you are the boat. Yeah, <laughs> and you got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Now it's already crashed. Wow. It's moving. It's a crash boat moving along. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now you have this uh, fifth block, which caused him to crash. Put it right here. Now you want some message like this. Say you crash exclamation mark for four seconds or any second, depending on you. Now also. And- and then you change back the costume. Yes. Now we want to respawn again. So So we want to get back to the starting point and yes. How do we so, do that? So we will duplicate it. Oh. Yeah, we'll use the two Take blocks that we already point. added. We already yes. had. Then put it. Uh, under the, uh, no, right at the under. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Now let's start. Let's test the code. Oh. So uh, we have a we have a message for you, Pratham. Uh, Yashvir is saying, try writing. Oops, you guided me wrong. <laughs> There's an exclamation mark. Yeah, we need more drama. Yeah. Yeah. Can you try and do it, try and add that? Oops, you guided me wrong. And maybe with a sad face or an exclamation mark. Can we add, uh, Ollie, can we add emojis to games these days uh, in messages? Emojis can be everywhere now. <laughs> but uh, I bel- I'm not sure whether it's supported in Scratch, but. You could try and uh, you you could try and insert an emoji into this message. I, I'm not sure if that will cause another bug. <laughs> it uh, it doesn't come as an emoji, but if you want to use emojis in Scratch, you can add images, and then they can show. Oh, I see. As a I separate see. costume. So you can't add them in the text. Okay. No. So we need to we need to call up MIT and ask. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. I'm seeing one emoji. Let's see. Okay. I Let's test it. it. Awesome. Can you run it? Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh, the long way. Yeah, we got an emoji. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't have to go to MIT. <laughs> now we have to reach to the the fourth fourth step. We have to reach to the sand now. Sand the beat. The objective. So we have the objective is to le- finish the obstacle course and reach to the sand. So go to control. Then bring out if, if then, then, then go to sensing, bring out touching color, click on it, then you see the dropper, click on it, click on it again. Now click on the beach. Now it will fall, go to the beach. Now and the color changes to yellow. Yes. Now, when you touch the beach, you can say,
another exciting message what can we say oli uh, i mean it, uh c- congratulations uh you're the best good job and plenty of emojis yeah right, so <laughs> maybe thumbs up yeah <laughs> yes done i can do for 3 second depending on you and then go to controls mm-hmm. you see the stop all but button block here bring mm-hmm. it over here and do it under the say ye say ye you want this and yes. then it will stop all you can record also yeah pratham we have a we have another message for you uh, so try writing ye you did it with two emojis is that what you have it says ye you yeah. won ye you we're, did it we're cl- ye you won we're close we're close yeah but but sometimes you develop games for clients and they have specific needs you need to yeah. meet them <laughs> and sometimes it must be very difficult to accommodate everyone's request because there must yeah. be so many different ones right yeah yeah Oh, you got it the wrong way now. Okay, so yes. I, yes. I, I, I'm actually, I'm very excited to see whether uh, Pratham can get through this centerpiece. It looks kind of difficult. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. He is a skilled did, navigator. Did, yes, we did it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. This is turned into a a coding course plus a a sailing course. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Pratham, no, don't do. No. Uh, oh, uh, messing with us. Keep, keeping us on edge. <laughs> yeah. Per- Awesome. <laughs> and stuff so amazing. <sighs> cool. That was that was uh, very amazing. that that was very nice Pratham. Yes. Um, okay, Oli, I have a question from the audience for you. So we have Savir who's asking uh, what's what was more exciting for you creating a game or playing a game uh, for for me creating a game uh, for sure um the, when you're creating a game uh i i mean games are great they're just they're kind of just groups of rules really put together in a unique unique way so um when when you think of an idea uh the process of creating it is is kind of this a journey of uh it, it trying to figure out what rules would create the game that you want to make and that's a really uh interesting thought exercise and uh it, it, of course the, the there's the execution of it which combines not just the code writing but the uh i mean games are like a confluence of art uh design uh programming mathematics um so it it's kind of drawing on all the knowledge that you have in order to execute this this vision that you have um is a really exciting experience so uh yeah that's why i would always prefer to to make but i also love to play because then you get to experience you know other people's um other people's kind of visions of course of course mm. yes but i like yeah. like if if you're a game designer i'll say like if you're a game designer you Uh, you always end up de- trying to deconstruct and figure out how people made the games that they've made so <laughs> well, once you start making games it's very difficult to play them after a while because you always end up deconstructing like how did they do that how did they do this <laughs> yeah it's like you're no longer happy with the with a tape recorder you kind of open want to open it up you you want to build your own uh, personal computers exactly i i remember when i started programming my first games um 
uh, I, I would I would play uh, I think I would play a lot of shooting games uh, when mm -hmm. I was a teenager, and I. I stopped playing them. I started looking at the reflections on the windows and the puddles and thinking, oh, how did how did the programmer create this effect <laughs> mm. <laughs> while yeah. there was like a war zone going on behind? Oh. So yeah, um yeah. You, you went you end up with that a different frame of mind when you're creating games. Right. So uh you mentioned that game designing is becoming very, very popular now. Uh, what are some of mm. the qualifications? Uh, we have a question from Umang. Uh, who's saying? Uh, who's asking? What are the qual different qualifications for being a game designer? Um, sure. So that's uh, game designers can come from all kinds of walks of of life. Um, I mean, I, I even know some game designers who came from the military and used to program like AI on on, on missiles, <laughs> and uh, that that meant that they were very good at programming AI inside of a game as well. But a game designer, uh, a little bit of art and a little bit of math. Um, uh, if you're, if if you have a good, strong background in those things, then you should have mm -hmm. the prerequisite skills to uh, sort of do do most game design tasks. Like, if but there are different roles within game making. You know, game design is just one of them. Then there's you know, uh, software engineering and and then some people are specialized in in art. So okay. um, yeah, game design is a little bit of everything, um, whereas some are more specialized. Mm. Okay, okay. Now you mentioned to us uh, this game that uh, this game that Pratham created looks more like uh, looks some in some way looks like Pac Man, a game that we used to play long yeah. ago and was very very popular. Uh, I'd love to be able to learn from you a little bit about the history of gaming and you know the history of online games and how it kind of started how old is the industry uh, um, uh, <laughs> well, well the, the the industry started with uh, tennis for two um which was played on a radar screen um, <laughs> um uh, as to how long ago that was i mean uh, i think 80 years plus i believe the first like two player game was made so it was like um, two players playing an actual tennis, like replica yeah, of tennis. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, a very um, a, a wireframe version of tennis, wherein you know you have two paddles and you you knock a ball. It was quite an advanced game for its time. I mean, more advanced than pong because it had sort of the sense of gravity that the ball would bounce, uh -huh. um, and you could knock it over a net. Um, so yeah, tennis for two was probably the first multiplayer game. Um, I think uh, gaming. Well, we know gaming was originally before the age of computers is something that we tended to do uh, with each, like with our friends, um, uh, just as a means of kind of socializing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I think more uh, more recently, uh, we've seen I don't know the the dawn of the game consoles, or uh, it, you know, and then even after that, the mobile phone that entered into people's homes. Um, and the game console was kind of an offline experience. I mean, uh, you had first you had uh, the, the Atari uh, 2600, and then beyond that, uh, it, the Nintendo, well, the, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, um, mm -hmm. and, and these uh, these these consoles were entirely offline. They were just sort of connected to your TV, and you played them by yourself. Yeah. Um, so, so that gave rise to like the single player game, you know, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and, and, and that's when games started to become more like stories, like, oh, you go on a quest, you slay a dragon. And the person you were playing against was in a sense, the designer of the game, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, not necessarily your, your friend sitting next to you. So, yeah. Uh, but as far as multiplayer games, uh, are concerned like then games started you know having two player options having two controllers play on your sofa at home but these days uh with with the internet being ubiquitous uh you, you can kind of play with your friends anywhere anytime and also make new friends online uh over over whatever interest uh you might have or whatever game you might like which is uh, a really cool thing it means that gaming is becoming more social again it's it's moving off the sofa and moving everywhere and it's connecting people and yeah it's helping people socialize which i think is a great thing which is kind of how gaming always always 
should have been and how it always was before gaming consoles came onto the scene. Yeah, it's quite fascinating how uh, gaming is something which uh, appeals to almost everyone across ages, uh, borders, uh, you know, games are, there are a lot of games which are popular across uh, continents uh, and, and different age groups. You mentioned a game called Among Us, which you like playing and Pratham also likes playing, so it doesn't really matter how old are you and he's already giving a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite fascinating, and uh, I, I I think uh, gaming can gaming is also uh, something which can be really powerful uh, tool in terms of uh, education and uh, helping kids learn, uh, making learning interesting for them. What is your uh, take on that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like gaming, um, well, uh, programming more generally. Um, is a very useful tool. Gaming, uh, at least like I started programming my first games around 10, 11, um, uh, even before these these tools like Scratch made it easy. Um, but gaming was a great application for coding or a great problem statement for, for like coding exercises um, because it, you, you had a, a specific objective that you wanted to really achieve. And uh, as a gamer myself at age, age 10, 11, I knew exactly like I want to make, uh, well, in my case, I wanted to make Quidditch. I really loved Harry Potter and there was no Quidditch game. And I really wanted to make that thing. Um, and anything, sh anything buggy wasn't good enough. So, you know, I, it, but it, 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 gaming presents like a really nice framework, like, okay, well, if I want to make this game, th this has to be the rule. Well, these are the, the set of rules I have to make. The, this has to be the loss objective. This is the win objective. And then I can write my code accordingly to uh, meet those objectives, um, which is, uh, and there's also no end of, you know, polish and extra things that you can add on to it. So I think gaming is a great place to start um, any kind of uh, co journey into learning code. Um, yeah, and also I, I believe the tools available today are very well geared towards gaming. Um, like uh, Scratch is, it, it, it's, it's kind of, um, it's very visual as well. Um, like Scratch, you can just sort of drag and drop things around on the scene, uh, which is uh, really intuitive. Um, it, it's always difficult to code when you don't see anything visual at the end of the day. Like, okay, I sorted. I sorted a, an array of, <laughs> of, of numbers, great. Like, uh, but th that doesn't feel too gratifying versus having a boat explode on the screen with emojis. Absolutely, absolutely. So coming to that point, uh, you mentioned that uh, you, you can always create games and you can always add on stuff to the games. Uh, yeah. We have a game in front of us, which Pratham and you just created. Uh, what What do you think we can, uh, Pratham? Any suggestions, uh, or maybe only you, any suggestion? What are some things we can add to this? Uh, hmm. Make it more engaging, more interesting. Pratham, do you have any ideas? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. You can. Uh, you can speed up like a sonic you can like maybe move, move you, the boat really fast yes okay go to you can go to backdrop you see backdrop 2 there's arrows oh. within it so it's already there here. yes okay. now now you 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 have, you can choose that this one and also you can speed up like shh. now. Also, we we can also code this now. Now go to controls. If then again, um, let's put it right over here first. Then now we have to go to touching color put it if then touching if touching color then go to dropper you see this white color go click on it then go to motions
Yeah, Pratham, what do you want? You, you basically want the boat to move fast? Move fast, yes. Yeah. So I think you can go to that perfect. Most, yeah. Motion? Move, move steps. Five How steps. Many steps. How many steps do you Five. want it to move? Five? Five, yes. Let's, let's ask Oli. Oli, what do you think? <laughs> I'd say let's start small. <laughs> yeah. Five is enough? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then where do you want to put this? Put it right over here. Yeah. Touching okay. color. Yeah. Now let's test the code. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> now it works. <laughs> no. Again, zoom. Zoom. Whoa. So it suddenly speed up, speeds up. Oh, yes. You missed that one. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get, if you want to use that, one, then you'll have to be very careful. It is. Yes. Hmm. What What if we wanted the boat to say something as it went faster? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instead of saying, instead of Pratham saying that uh, zoom sound, maybe the boat could say that. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling that that could make this exciting. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. No, not a text, but an actual sound block. Oh, an actual text. sound. Yeah. Why is this written weird? <laughs> <laughs> Pratham, I think you might know. <laughs> I think I recorded it also. Oh, you had to do that? Why did okay. it do that? Now let's try also. Do we get audio? Um. <laughs> Pratham, are you sharing the audio? Because I didn't hear anything. So I am saying the audio. Uh, no, I don't think we have the audio. Can you uh, stop sharing the screen and then share it again with after you check the box? Okay. Yeah. Because I with the sound, I think just add another very interesting element to the whole game. Sounds, oh, wait. sounds are an important part of the game, right? Oh wait, I I want one more thing. So now you're starting again. Is, now I can see the sound icon. Perfect. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. I don't know why is it work. Is that you talking, Pratham? Is that you who recorded your sound? Yes. <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> yeah. I need to do it one more thing. Because it's touching white and that. It has to touch this yellow, the beach no, one. It, yeah, but that's fine. But when even when it's crossing the white, it can play a sound. It can do. Uh, there, there can be a sound. This, you can use another sound block. Yeah, but it stops right there. Because I try know, to move. Okay, let's 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 try and understand why does it stop. Yes. Because you're using a block which says play sound until done. And no. you first play the complete sound, and then when the sound is played, then it will start with the rest of the code. So you can use a different block, which is, I think, under it. Start sound. Yeah, start sound. And then it will keep going along, maybe. Okay. And what is the sound you're choosing? I think pop. Oh, okay. I can record also. Yeah, I you can, can record. record. Yeah, sure. Oh, the sound that you're making from uh, making earlier, you can probably record that. It's a heat. Perfect. So, so um, when you're making games as uh, like in, in as an independent, you know, making them just by yourself, you end up 
having to do your own artwork and your own sounds. Um, I, I, I've had to record a lot of the sounds or find <laughs> find sounds for my own games. Um, but there's a one one card game that we released, which is very very popular in India, mm. and uh, mm. it's played during Diwali a lot, uh, Teen Party. So um, when <laughs> uh, we have a gifting system in that game, and you can send somebody a donkey, um, and it makes a donkey sound. <laughs> That's and, yeah, but I, I couldn't find, I, I was working on the game late at night and I couldn't find a good donkey sound. <laughs> and, the, you know, the deadline was coming up and I was getting, you know, I was kind of worried what, how come, how come these donkeys don't sound very good? So I had to make my own donkey sound. <laughs> uh, and so, so I was there in the middle of the night, you know, going, you know, trying to get the perfect, perfect donkey sound. <laughs> I, so I managed, I managed, you know, I worked on the impression, as you can hear, and um, then the, the sound went out. And now that, that donkey sound has been heard by, and I'm not joking, it's been heard by over a billion people. Wow. <laughs> so that's, that's my claim to fame in India, is that my donkey impression has been heard more than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, possibly the most famous donkey impression ever. It was yes. me. I needed, I need the credits. <laughs> Yeah, I think that there's a word there's a word in India uh, for uh, that uh, which is called jugad. I don't know if you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have. I have heard of it. Yeah. So uh, it, by hook, uh, by hook or crook, by hook or crook getting yes, it done. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Pratham, can we test the code again? Yes, sir. Did you hit? I think it was ready. Yeah, I think it's ready. Yeah, perfect. Did you hit? I think you'll have to stop stop going over that third one. Jahit 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 Yeah, I think we are there. So, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. Let's let's get it back. Oh no, I stopped. Awesome. Yes. So you have you've shown everyone how to add uh, another add-on. Uh, what are some of the other yes. things that we can add to this? Uh, I don't. I know we don't have a lot of time, but maybe we can just talk about it, and people can practice on their own time. Kids can practice on their own time. What are some of the other things, Oli, that you think uh, can be added to keep, make this more engaging, interesting? So I, uh, I mean, I'll approach this from from the a game design perspective, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, completing this level right now, there's only one way to complete it. But what happens if there were more ways to complete it? So, uh, it, you know, you could um, have a difficult and an easy route, maybe. You could get into level design and try different levels. But I think um, maybe if you, a, a simple thing to do here is to maybe put collectibles around the level, like things you can collect mm -hmm. um, and, and put them in difficult places. And then, uh, you know, uh, a good player or a, a player who's looking for a challenge can try and collect all of the gold coins, maybe, uh, or, or they can just try and you know complete it the normal way. So it gives you either the the high skill way of completing it or the or the easy way of doing it. 
perfect and then you also mentioned you that can, you, yeah pratham also you can uh, play with multiplayer or other games with friends and at sound or at text that i won <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't fun. Then yeah. Anything you can add, like sound, the yeah, woohoo winning sound, yeah, or yeah. any kind of sound or text you can add to your code and some, and that's it. Yeah, and maybe you can even add a timer, uh, race yeah. against the timer, and. Uh, <laughs> uh you know maybe add a score somewhere on this side on the points you collected or lap you can lap one lap two lap three yeah. any time or scores yeah because if you if you think about it the uh the rules that you've created uh, pratham in this level can be applied to any kind of level right uh, yes. it it's a and that principle is you know it's about making things generic um so you don't want to code just for one level you want to code for uh, an entire game where that can have any number of different combinations so here like white will always speed you up brown will always kill you yellow is always the end so uh with that in mind you can make any well y- your imagination is is the limitation on how you can combine um these rules together so uh for example um brown kills you but what if brown is a moving object oh yeah. <laughs> yeah um maybe i add a small turn table towards that uh, uh towards the right hand side of the screen where the boat is just about to reach the objective you know it keeps rotating the turn table on the screen and as you go closer to that island you have to be even more cautious Yeah. Also, you can add the racing game of F1 cars. Also, going. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. change the you can change this track from a you can change the boat to a car. You can change it to maybe a fish and anything else. So, uh, how was your experience today, Pratham? Did you like making this game? Yes, sir. I hope that we can. Uh, uh you know possibly see this game develop into something even better maybe something some day we can have oli uh, take a look at this professionally and maybe analyze <laughs> review this that you know maybe this this is a game worth considering for my next project the new flappy bird what the the wings yeah so uh coming to that oli i wanted to ask you uh, this uh, that uh, we know kids love playing games we know they are, they they all do uh, what are some of the advantages of uh, kids uh, you know of gaming uh, as far as kids are concerned uh, how what, what are the some of the things or skills that they would learn not just by playing games but by also being able to create games mm. uh, so uh, play, playing games by itself um it's often because uh, the the activity is often quite a personal one like somebody is just on the screen or staring at a screen it it might be difficult to tell from the outside what uh, a, a somebody might be learning <laughs> from that or whole like uh, like a sedentary kind of um, experience but it's um it, i think games in, especially like games in terms of strategy games um uh, just simply just in enjoying a story um hand eye coordination uh, those sorts of things are, are sort of byproducts of of playing lots of games and just becoming very very familiar with um you know game mechanics uh etc et is is that is certainly something that um has helped me uh, in my career um i i used to play a lot of games that required teamwork um that so you would have to strategize with a team in order to get victory and i think um it just that that basic set of skills uh you know that that team working ability 
help me work in professional teams later, uh, trying to achieve other kinds of objectives that were not <laughs> about making things explode. Um, so I, I say like, um, yeah, working as a team is definitely when it comes to multiplayer games is a very core is very core to the experience and uh, also a very helpful skill. Um, yeah, and uh, I think in in terms of building games, the the potential is kind of limitless. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can use very simple tools like the one we've seen today to make. Um, uh, well, kind of make your imagination come alive in any which way you want. Um, and or you can approach it from a, a, a kind of problem solving angle as well to see like, oh, is it, is it even possible to make a game like this? And will this even be, is this even fun? Let's just give it a go. So it's, uh, yeah, we, uh, it, creating games isn't always, uh, yeah, it isn't always just uh, an exercise in, in the imagination. Sometimes it's a, a very hard problem-solving exercise. So, um, yeah, I, I'd uh, say the benefits of playing and creating uh, definitely exist um, it, it just in, in quite vastly different uh, kind of areas. Unless sometimes, you know, you do have games which allow you to make things. Mm -hmm. I think there's like roadblocks. Um, there's Minecraft. So the imagination that can take place within those spaces is also uh, pretty pretty awesome. Um, so, so sometimes games kind of trick you into thinking you're playing them, but actually you're making them <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, and we all know how important these uh, life skills are, problem solving, creativity, working in teams. These are all mm. important skills that uh, last for a lifetime. They're, they're, they're really important. For mm. almost everyone today, irrespective of which industry, which profession you may be in, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it's best to learn that skill young, I believe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, I, I remember very, very clearly like the the team battles that we used to engage in um, yeah. as as kids and. Games just allowed us to very spontaneously get together, communicate, mm -hmm. and uh, strategize. It, it was quite um, so, some of my fondest uh, fondest memories, and I, I believe a lot of those uh, those experiences help you know me today in in building teams and, and companies. Yeah, and, do, and yeah. having fun at the same time. You know, you got to remember to have fun. <laughs> So, uh, Oli, a lot of kids that we uh, meet every day, uh, when they want to start learning code and when they want to start uh, learning technology, for them, the aspiration is uh, game design. They want to get into the gaming industry. They want to be, make a career of themselves. And of course, they're all passionate uh, about playing games themselves. But they want to make a future of themselves. And they want to see themselves in a position where they can start creating games, which will be popular, which will be uh, played across the world. Uh, mm. So what can, how, how can those kids start and what are some of the uh, areas that they can kind of focus on so that they can move into that direction? Sure. I think um, well, the advice I would give to anybody who wants to get into the gaming industry is to, is to relentlessly make games um, before you even apply for a job. You know, uh, you should be making games all the time. Um, not be too precious about your ideas. Like making a game is is in some ways like writing a book. If you're too precious about your book, you'll ne it'll never get written. Uh, so you you just need to keep practicing, uh, keep trying different ideas, and make sure other people play your games. You know, it, make something, uh, play it yourself. Uh, and then, you know, like Pratham made the, the boat race game, give that to somebody to play, see if they can figure it out, see if they mm -hmm. have fun playing, you know, and, and keep getting your friends to play your games and maybe have them, have them become your play testers, uh, mm -hmm. get a, a good, um, so uh, game designers need to be really good at taking feedback and also understanding how people interact with their games. What, are they, what do they struggle with? What do they like? What don't they like? And uh, 
kind of review and improve continuously. So that's why it's important to keep making and iterating until you become good, until you get this sense of what, what generally works and what doesn't work. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then once you've made enough games, uh, you, you go to, you get, you know, then you'll end, you'll have a lot of work ready to show in your portfolio. You can apply for jobs and, you know, mostly in the gaming industry, we, we look at, you know, uh, more than anything, some, uh, somebody's portfolio of, okay. of work. Yeah. And if they have games already in there and if they're fun, then that definitely helps. Wonderful. Uh, I have a question to that note uh, from Sabir, who's asked to, what are the softwares you use for a prof uh, professional game designing? Oh, um, <laughs> it, it may not sound too exciting, actually. Um, okay. But, but uh, we don't use, uh, for game, for actual, well, there are different things. There's the IDE, the inter integrated game, well, inter integrated development environment. And that could be like a game engine, like Unity is a popular game engine, um, uh, which allows you to, you know, very quickly get in, make 3D characters, animations, uh, the basic logic, that kind of thing um, is our development environment. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but there are other development environments like Unreal. Um, we use a, a, a development environment called Cocos Creator. Um, uh, and in a way, Scratch, well, yeah, Scratch is also a development environment. So there's, there's all manner of those. Uh, mm -hmm. But then for actual game designing, uh, we're usually, you know, we're looking at Microsoft Excel sheets and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. changing numbers to balance a game, you know, like, okay, how, how many health points should somebody have? How much damage should this energy, uh, should, should this enemy do? That sort of thing we're doing. So we're looking at, the, you know, some sort of spreadsheet in order to do that balancing. And then um, the, I, in, for artists, we're, they're using like Photoshop, usually do, to do paintings, drawings, uh, it's the concept arts, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Yeah. And of course, like trying to, uh, more so than anything, uh, game design is, if, if you're game designing with a team, it's about trying to, bring the team on board with an idea. So more, uh, a lot of times you're working with the artist and, and maybe other designers to create like a, a pitch, like a game pitch. It's like a movie pitch. You're like, this is gonna be the best, this is why my game is the best and this is why this is uh, going to work. So a, a lot of time designers are making those sorts of pitches as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, and any software really that you think does that job is great. <laughs> okay. So Pratham, uh, maybe the next step for you probably could be you could start sharing your boat race game with your friends, uh, kids in school, and uh, ask them how do what do they feel about it, and you know if they have any thoughts on it, and then start working on that feedback. Uh, like Oliver said, uh, you know, make changes, keep iterating, keep making things. Uh, so that the, the games become even more engaging and interesting. And I think that's how you can evolve into a better game designer. Yeah. I think yeah. Uh, the, the, the key thing is like, you're not just making games for yourself. Yeah. You're making games for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, Oli, is there a good age to start? Or uh, what is the youngest that you've seen anybody start creating excellent games? Um, I mean, excellent games is, is subjective, but I've yeah, seen people yeah. make, make, start making games as, uh, I, it, I mean, not in code, but you can start making games uh, very early on uh, just by using like objects in the physical world. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe without any sort of encouragement whatsoever, uh, some kids just naturally jump into making games and making mm -hmm. fantasies. So that's that's that, but I think around uh, well as early as possible. I think is the is the best time to start trying to apply that um, in, in a in a digital environment. Um, I'm I'm not sure entirely. Like you know, as soon as you get your hands on a 
uh, at what age people can kind of get their hands on a on a computer initially. But um, I'd say shortly after that is probably the right time to start. If if you see that you know somebody has a natural flair for it, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think people naturally have this inclination. Like they, they, you want to make stuff, you want to uh, build cool games that you and your friends will play. So um, just give giving the tools to to allow that to happen is the simplest thing. Yeah. So in our experience, we've seen uh, the moment uh, kids start learning programming or coding. Uh, one of the first things that they would want to do is make games and and yeah. uh, through learning to make games they're able to l learn coding much faster as compared to a normal lesson and it just makes the whole experience even more engaging mm. right like for example in the activity that we today did today we we may not have discussed it and we didn't even uh, touch upon this, but we learned some very important aspects of programming, which uh, are part of what we normally would do in a coding class. Uh, important lessons like how do operators work? And uh, you know, how do uh, how does this variable work if you were to add a time timer to this program? And uh, what happens when two, two sprites connect or touch each other? So these are important elements of programming, right? How do events yeah. work? Stuff which we would uh, use in gaming a lot. So uh, kids are able to learn all these concepts by making their own games. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's also gaming is a great application of mathematics as well, like basic yeah. mathematics. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, you'd already touched on 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 variables, but even the basic control mechanisms uh, require base, basic maths to. To, to make work like for example in this boat racing game the boat moved towards the mouse so if you were to think about uh if, if you were to take the the sketch uh layer away how does that actually work how do you get a boat to move towards a mouse if you only know the x and y and your <laughs> and your mouse is a, another x y position well well you have to use trigonometry so um it's uh, simply getting like basic movement to work is uh, is a mathematical and a gaming design kind of problem. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we are almost towards the end of our time, uh, Oli. I just wanted to ask you this one last question. What probably would be your message to everyone who's watching and people who are going to be watching the show later? Message to the kids, the parents, educators. Why should they? Uh, learn to make games and why should they learn to uh, work with technology? Why should they start becoming creators of technology? <laughs> well, it, coding, uh, of course, is such a fundamental tool in the 21st century. Um, it's not just in gaming, but, uh, you know, in, in all kinds of software. Um, we've reached a stage where um, you know, the hardware has become sophisticated enough to launch kind of a software revolution. Um, so the, the software developers of the next, you know, uh, who are children or young, young people today um, will be the rock stars of tomorrow. Um, and gaming, gaming is just a, a great way to start. Some people may pursue a career in gaming, um, you know, if they take a particular flair in, you know, or, or or really love the other aspects of it, you know, creating the sound effects like Pratham has done, and, and uh, creating a cool kind of boat exploding animation, that kind of thing. Um, uh, whereas others were, would be more inclined in, you know, once you start coding a game, you, very quickly you'll begin to realize, hang on, there are, you know. That there are all manner of problems I can solve using using the same logic I'm using to make games. So uh, it, ga gaming is just a great fo like point of focus initially, but it leads to so many other things. Absolutely. So that's why I would recommend to start with gaming. Absolutely. And on that note, uh, it was a wonderful morning spent with both of you, Pratham and Oli. Uh, it was an excellent interaction and thank you so much both of you for taking out the time to be with us to be a part of the show 
it was an honor for us to host you and discuss the whole idea about how the gaming industry works uh, knowing more about game design and of course pratham uh, showing how to make a game actually and uh, i'm sure inspiring everyone all the people who are going to be watching i'm inspired so uh, yes yes, <laughs> yes. of course <clears throat> Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank you so much. And in the end, we always say uh, we we do a virtual high five. So uh, can I can I have a show of hands? Yay! Both hands. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you so much. Bye, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of the show today. So. in the end we'd like to thank everyone and uh, we'll be back next week with another young coder for the week and another guest uh, you can always reach out to us on our website that's the link on the uh, on your screen and then you can always find us on facebook these are the links for facebook that's for twitter and you can find all our episodes on youtube so we will meet each one of you next week with a young child and a young coder until then take care and bye